Think Again TV is produced by Centre for Inquiry, Canada's premier venue for secular humanists, atheists, skeptics, and free thinkers. You were very intimately involved in the crafting of tonight's event. Um, why, why did you think that it would be, uh, you know, t uh, interesting to the public to debate the, the big SETI question? Well, partly because it's an exciting time in, in terms of finding other worlds beyond our solar system, and in particular, the search for habitable worlds is really heating up. So that was one. And the other is that the uh, discoveries have implications potentially uh, for, for many other fields beyond astronomy and even perhaps beyond science. So I thought it's an interesting uh, discussion to have. Uh, um, I mean, I, I really, I, I feel you're giving me too much credit. I feel like I sort of planted the germ of an idea and you guys ran with it and shaped it. So I don't want to take credit for that. I, I, did, I did think it would be an interesting uh, event. To well, watch. when you say that the event naturally lent itself to a larger debate, you also were involved in helping us select other speakers who could help to broaden that conversation. And I think we did a pretty good job of that. Why do you feel the steady question lends itself so naturally to talking about ethics and meaning and the big you know, questions of life, the universe, and everything? Well, I think it is because, I mean, you know, the question of Avi alone is, it, it is fundamental. It's, it's, it's something that's, um, I think, quite central to even defining what it means to be human, I mean, to be blunt about it. So uh, I think that appeals, you know, that's not a new question in many ways. It's a question that's been asked many times in history in many different contexts. Uh, I just think that that uh, today, with the discoveries from the world of astronomy, we're sort of bringing new perspectives to that question and, and actually new data and new findings that shed some light on some aspects of it. But we're still far from a complete answer or a right. definitive answer on are we alone or not. We still don't know, but but at least the uh, we do know now that there are many other worlds and some of them we might find out soon, you know, may even resemble ours in some ways. So we're closer in that sense, but, but we still don't know if there's another biology, whether what it would look like. And also there are other people in, in the, on the panel, I think it was interesting because uh, uh, Seth Sostak came from a uh, background of searching for uh, signs of technological civilization, signals from technological civilization. And Robert Sawyer came from you know, a science fiction background, having thought a lot about what ET might look like and how it might communicate with each other and, and with us, what the would implications be, yeah. are, uh, and in some ways more than the rest of us scientists because right. he's thought a lot more about the big picture, so it was an interesting uh, conversation to have. I was really struck when, um, I think it was you or another person on the panel, mentioned that the number of Earth-type planets around sun-like stars is as high as 5 or 10 percent according to the first round of data we're getting from well, Kepler? Well, the, the indications are that small planets are more common. We still we have a number of Earth-sized candidates from the Kepler mission. Uh, but uh, and, a, and a handful of uh, uh, planet candidates in the habitable zone, uh. but we still don't have definitive numbers on that. But certainly the trend is pointing towards there being uh, more of the small planets than big ones. And so that's not necessarily Earth type, because we don't know everything don't know, about exactly, enough to pinpoint. Yeah. Exactly, but, but, but we are much closer to an answer than we've ever been. So uh, hopefully in the lifetime of the Kepler mission we'll have more definitive numbers. I know it's all speculative, but I mean, how close do you think we are to finding? I think you said on the panel that you you believe that there is quite likely life out there. Uh, I'm not sure I said it that way. I'm not sure I said I believe there's life. I, I think the odds are good, mm -hmm. uh, but as a scientist, it's sort of not really based on belief as right. much as I would write rather, you know, have uh, have data and have uh, you know evidence to conclude one way or the other. So in in some sense, I think I, I made this comment that. Uh, we don't know if there's life elsewhere, and we won't know till we know, in some sense, right? We have to find it to know that there is uh, more than one life uh, 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 as it is. So uh, we're close to finding an answer. I don't know how to predict that. I think we're close to finding other, uh, knowing whether there are other Earth-like planets in Earth-like orbits around Sun-like stars and how common those are, but that's still right. a big step away from life itself. And as we take those steps and as we search, there's you know so much excitement in the search itself. Absolutely, and yeah. It's a very exciting time. Us, I mean, yeah. I mean, I quote in my in my book, Strange New Worlds, an astronomer saying, you know, it really feels like the Wild West. You know, we're playing on the frontier, we're making discoveries, uh, and and we're thinking of new ways of characterizing these planets that we find. So it, it really is a very uh, fun and exciting time to be involved yeah. in that search. And it's very exciting to have been part of this project, this symposium today. Thank you, Ray J, for your time. Thank you, Justin. Thanks for inviting me to be part of it. Think Again TV is produced by...
Center for Inquiry, Canada's premier venue for secular humanists, atheists, skeptics, and free thinkers. CFI Canada coordinates branches and campus groups across the country, runs a public education series, provides secular community services, incorporates cutting-edge multimedia such as blogs, podcasts, and YouTube, and is a regular voice in the press presenting a secular humanist, atheist, and skeptical perspective.